graphing y equals 2x, and x plus y equals 12. Yep, you've already done it. The uh, timing in here is extremely important. If you wait and copy, you're not going to learn anything. It is absolutely the sure thing. You can copy every single thing I do, and you're not going to learn anything from it. You have to give it a try. have two lines and they should intersect at and the point of intersection is your solution. Don't wait for me guys. Notice this is y equals mx plus b. The b is missing, that means it's zero. That's one way to think of this. You can think of this missing zero. There it's in standard form, y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. Um, another way to think of the same thing is that I can choose any x value I want. One of my x values that I like is 0. And when x is 0, I get a y value out. I can also choose another value for x, like 1, and get a y value out. I can choose 2, or 3, or 4, or 5. You can make as many, as many points as you want. You only need two. Two will do it. Everybody see the y value? This is b and it's zero. Yes. Zero, zero is your y-intercept. That doesn't happen very often, but when you don't have a b, it's going to be zero, zero. Now I have two choices to get my next point. I can choose a one for my x, and that's going to give me two times one for y, which is two. And I can graph one, two. I also have the option of counting my slope. Notice that my slope is the coefficient on the x. It's that number in front right here. It's called the coefficient. And it happens to be 2 over 1. Even though the 1 isn't written, it's still there. And I can count my slope. That's positive 2, up 2, and over 1. I can go from any point on my graph that I want. Up 2, and over 1, and up 2, and over 1, and up 2, and over 1. I can count it as many times as I want. Something else I want to point out. Guys, it's really easy on these to mess up your line just a little tiny bit, and then your intersection ends up being off. So a good idea is to count all your points out using the slope, maybe. Notice that a slope of 2 over 1 is the same as a slope of negative 2 over negative 1. You can count slopes backwards, down 2 and back 1. Notice it's still a positive line. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I get lots of points on this line. All those black points make that black equation true. In every case, y is equal to 2 times x in every one of these. I have three methods for graphing this. One of the methods, the first method you learned was to solve for y, to get y by itself. You add negative x to both sides, and you're done y is equal to negative x plus 12. This equation is the same as this equation. All I did was add negative x on both sides. You can graph this using your slope and intercept. When x is 0, y is 12. There's a y-intercept. 
Here's a slope. Uh, what number is in front of that x right there? One. There is a negative one right there, and it's over one. That's a slope. So you can write the y-intercept and the slope, but that's not the easy method. This thing is in what we call standard form. So a lot of times we graph it using intercepts. We pick a zero for x, and then we can actually put the zero right there for x. When x is zero, y equals 12. See it? And the same thing happens when I put the y value for zero. I can choose the other intercept, and if I put y equals zero, see the y? It's zero, then x equals 12. Now what's really interesting about this one, in particular, is that you can pick any two numbers to have a sum of 12. 1 and 11, 10 and 2, 9 and 3, 8 and 4, 5 and 7, 6 and 6. All of those points will make that equation true. Would you not be able yeah, we're going to do substitution in a minute, but we're graphing right now. But yeah, yeah, we will do that. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, for right now, though, be careful. Very common to get these backwards. This is a y value. This is an x value. Make sure that you get this one on the y axis and this one on the x axis. In this case, you could have them backwards and not even know it, huh? See what I mean? So 12, 0, sorry, 0, 12, zero, 12 and 12, 0. There, I got it backwards. Now, I'm also going to do this by counting my slopes so I can get lots of points to make sure I don't mess this up. Because it is possible if you just are off just a little tiny bit on your line, maybe you're off by this much, it doesn't look right. See what I mean? Even if you're just a little tiny bit off on your line, it's not going to intersect in the right place. So I'm going to count my slope. Down one and over one, down one and over one. And it should intersect, yep. I'm going to draw my lines. there are some big drawbacks to graphing. One of the biggest ones is if this doesn't work out nice and even, you're not going to get the answer. If this doesn't work out, like if this was a one-third, you wouldn't be able to tell. So graphing is, is, isn't the best method usually. In this situation, we have an intersection though. It's right on a point, or eight. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to indicate your answer on your graph. But I also want you to go back to the original uh, paper that you have. Put your name and period on that if you haven't done it yet. The original paper has some equations on it that are written out nice and neat. It says y equals 2x and x plus y equals 12. And I want to see this as part of your assignment. You need to go back to the original and put a solution here. My solution, I think it's 4, 8, so I'm going to substitute for x and y and see if it's true. This literally takes seconds to do. I'm in five seconds. You put a 4 for x and an 8 for y, and you see if it's true. 8 is equal to 2 times 4. I know that one works. And 4 plus 8 is equal to 12, so I know that one's true, so I know absolutely for certain I have the right answer. This doesn't take any time. You can be absolutely certain before you turn in your test that you have the right answers if you check them. You should be checking these on the original worksheet. Don't put your name on it. Is it the print one? 